our first review, the shortcut for the selection tool. I'm going to move down to the text tool here. The shortcut for the selection tool is to press V on your keyboard and that takes the this tool and makes it active here, the selection tool. The shortcut for the direct selection tool is A on your keyboard. So press your A, it jumps over to make the direct selection tool active. If you press P, you get to your pen tool and the tab key I pressed, it removes all the menus and panels, or the panels, I can still see the menu up there, and then brings them back. Uh, if you want to zoom s into your document, you can click the zoom tool and draw a box around the part that you want to zoom into. If you want to get back to fit to page, double click the hand tool. The shortcut for the zoom tool is Z. When I press the Z on my keyboard, it makes the zoom tool active. Now I'm going to just put a few little objects on here. You can see that if I <laughs> Right now, these have no fill and no stroke, and this will happen to you at some point. So I will show you how to fix it. I get called over all the time for this. Here's the selection tool. I click off. Um, these are, are here. I'm going to draw a marquee selection around them and just take them back to the default, and that is this little icon right here. This is the fill icon. This is the stroke icon, and this is the default icon, which means that objects that I draw, I just drew do have a black outline around them. Can't see that so well, so I will make the, it a little bit bigger here, go up to four points. But there's nothing in the middle, so you can't use your select tool to grab onto a color and move it. If there is no fill, then if there's no fill, you need to put your cursor on a line in order to be able to drag the object. I'm going to select all of these, make the fill box active, and click on a color here and fill those three with colors. And I will click off and deselect them all. And so right now the problem here is that I need to s make the default active from this point on. And now when I draw an object, I will have the default one point black stroke around here and, and no fill. So if I am zoomed in to an object and I want to just get a temporary hand tool. So the hand tool, when we're zoomed in and we click it, it moves us over around our page so that we can come over here, for example. So if I am in a different tool and I, so I'm in the polygon tool, if I want the temporary hand tool and I don't want to get out of this tool, if I press and hold my spacebar, that becomes a little temporary hand tool. As soon as I let go of the spacebar, that tool, the hand tool, disappears and I'm back to my original tool. So it's just a temporary tool. I'm going to double click the hand tool to get back to fit to page. We also have here a shortcut to open the Pages panel. So F12, when I press F12, I actually don't have, oh, there's my Pages right here. So there's my Pages. I'll put it over here and I will close it and press F12 and it will, it will open the Pages panel and make it active. Setting horizontal guides. 
There's a few ways to do this. I'm going to switch to the Select tool. If I want a horizontal guide, method one is I pull it out and I watch the number on my screen until, if I want that exactly at one inch, I need to watch and move my mouse until I get exactly to one inch. And you can see that's not easy or fast, but I will let it go. So that's one method is you just pull and watch the number here. Now I want a guideline at two inches. So another way I can do it is to pull like we did the last time. Come down and you can see, look over here on the ruler. I'm staying on the page, but you can see there's a little dotted line and I'm close to two. But to make this faster, if I press and hold the shift key, now I'm going to snap to those little tick er increments shown on the ruler. So I can quickly go to 1.25, 1.5, 1.75, and I don't know these decimal equiv equivalents of the uh, eights there. Uh, but you could see that, again, if I want to go to three inches, I can hold the shift tool, and that will snap me into the closest tick on the ruler. You can see that w this guideline is only across the page. This one is across our artboard and the pasteboard. And the difference is that if I drag a guideline here to one and a half and let go, and I will use my shift key to lock in, I need to release my mouse first. If I drag it over the pasteboard, it is global. It goes across a whole number of pages. If you have a spread with two pages here, it will go across the entire spread. If I drop it here on the page, it will only go across the page. So method one is pull down and just keep watching the number until you get the number that you want. Method two is to pull down and and hold down the shift key to help you lock into increments and make it a little bit faster. Method three is to pull down and just drop one, and I want it at four inches. Uh, so usually when you pull it down, it's selected, but maybe I jiggled my mouse. So if I click on it, you can see it goes dark blue. I want this one at four inches, four, enter. And you can see it jumps right down to the four inches on the ruler. So that's four methods, boy, and one last one. So if I come right on the vertical ruler, hold down my shift key, double click on the five, one, two, that give me a guideline right at five inches. So many ways to do that. If I don't want my rulers, I can, right now they are showing, I can press Control R, they disappear. I press Control R, they reappear. You can also do this through the menu, hide rulers, and the next, if you hide them, the next time that you click on the view menu, it will be show rulers, and there's the shortcut showing for you. So we're uh, working with text, and we click the text tool, and we want to uh, get to a font. I'm going to pull out a text frame. This shows my control panel up here with all my font controls. Let's say I want a font in Viner hand. I can click the arrow here, press the V. That takes me to the V fonts. Now, once in a while, you'd have to scroll back up because there's a little one hidden right above the one that's showing. So I will find finer hand and begin to type. So that's a fast way to get to your fonts. If you open a second copy of this window, and I, I'm not sure how often you would be doing this, but it is possible. We did it in the f one of the first exercises. We click Window, Arrange, and I'll click on the word arrange to hold that and click new window. So now the two are tiled. One's called untitled one. 
at 94%. And untitled 1, this is the second copy showing there. And of course, the zoom level always shows after that. So we have a second copy of the same document. I am going to close that. OK, and number 15 on our review, the only way to reduce the frame size to fit the text. OK, so here I have some text. I'm just going to double click in here, do a Control A, and make it a lot bigger so that we can see it. OK, so if I want to make this frame fit to the content, Sometimes we have a little icon right here. I'm going to switch back to Type Tool for a minute. Uh, it's not there. Switch back to here. It is not there. There are a few ways to do this. One way is to double-click here on this handle and here on this handle and that fits the frame to the content, and I will undo that. Method 2, probably the fastest, 1, 2 on a corner handle, and I will undo that. Whoops, let me redo that. And the last way is, mm, it's up here in a menu, object, fitting, fit frame to content. So a few different ways to do that. I think the fastest is just to double click that corner handle. All right, if we are typing, if we're in the middle of typing some text, so we're in the type tool. So therefore, if I go to the zoom tool and zoom around my frame to just be able to see everything better, I will get out of the type tool. And there is a way to do that more quickly. And the way to do that more quickly is to use press and hold at the same time. Well, you can press control first and then the space bar, but hold them down and don't release. And if you look at the screen, what pops up is your zoom cursor. So I can zoom into my text frame, release my mouse, and then release my control and spacebar on my keyboard and I'm back into my text tool. Uh, next thing on our review says you must have a guideline first before you can locate it to an exact measurement. We've already done that but I will show you that it is true that if I want this one in a different place I need to select it first and then I can I can switch the location using that. Sometimes you don't want these to move around and you can usually lock them, grids and guides. You can come in here and once you have them all set up, you can lock them. Number 18, you know the text frame is snapping to the guideline when you move it close to the guideline because the arrow changes to this color. So I will just zoom in a little bit and I want to have a text frame right here at this intersection. Right now you see the text cursor, but the closer I get, huh, it's lying. I'm going to click and hold and you see the white little cursor, that's showing me that I am snapped against a, a guideline. All right, and once you have set up a document and then you decide that you need to change your margins, when we set up a document, we come into New, File, New, Document, or use Control N would be easier, and we set up our margins here. If we decide that we need to change them afterward, the place that we're going to go is to lay out margins and columns, and we will be able to access our margins and columns there. That is page one of the first review.